wants to play a Super Boy. This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wayne, writer of Superman Birthright. And you're listening to The Krypton Report. And you're listening to Krypton Report. Up in the sky. Look. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's the Krypton Report. The All Things Kryptonian podcast, including Superman and Supergirl. We discuss games, movies, cartoons, TV shows, and comics. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. And bird, and a plane, and Supergirl. All right. Welcome to the Krypton Report. It is myself, Tyler, the Superman of Blue. Or as I like to call myself, the Man of Amazement. And with me is the mean, not so green, because he's the Man of Red, the buff, the tough, the also lovable James Cole. Hello, sir. Yeah, hello. <laughs> you ever watch Psych? I am. I'm very lovable. Do you ever watch Psych? Um, I've seen a few episodes. Uh, I haven't watched it uh, as as an ongoing thing. It is, like, one of my favorite shows. And it's also one, like, if I'm ever, like, down, like, when Solomon was in the NICU... Like when we were sitting in the room, I watched it because it just always brings me joy. Uh, right. And it's so laughable. But if you go back, the character of Sean will always introduce Gus in the most interesting like manner. Like he'll be like, and this is my associate, Mr. Jazz Hands. And like, <laughs> you know, like they'll always come up with something like. Yeah, funny. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, And that's how I feel sometimes when I'm like, kind of like, um. Uh, like how am I gonna introduce James? And uh, <laughs> that's where we are. Right. So let's talk yep, about I'm like a big teddy bear. bear. I'm lovable. <laughs> like the Charmin bear? I am too a teddy bear, bear Bella. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's Charmin Queen. Woo. <laughs> uh let's discuss Supergirl in this current episode. De Lex Machina, which, before we get into spoilers, I'm just going to throw this out there. This is probably, like, the best filmed anything with Lex Luthor. Yeah. Um, I, feel like I this... mean, it's comparable to, what was it, The House of L uh, last season? You know, uh, comparable about about how his... How he how he manipulated and spent time planning and every doing all this stuff behind the scenes, um, you know Phil Phil always he always hates these kind of like backtrack kind of filler, put the pieces together episodes, and I get that right, but I love it in this context because it shows you just how manipulative the character of Lex is. Yeah, because we see that um, even in his time of post crisis where he has a chance to rebuild he still has his path that he's going to go down uh yeah and i mean i can see that too you know the idea that these these type of episodes um i mean kind of like the one we got earlier in the season where basically it was all lena and andrea rojas um and and you know oh, yeah. that and, and and speaking of Andrea Rojas, Rojas, um, uh, it just reminded me to bring it up. If you haven't watched it in a long time, go back and watch Dodgeball. Hmm. Um, ben Stiller and um, uh, Ma- Matthew Vaughn. Uh, Andrea Rojas plays uh, – the actress is Amber, the cheerleader that Justin Long is interested in. I just thought you were going to bring up the part where the uh, character of Eve Tessmacher in this episode goes, Rojas. And, like, <laughs> I, I, like, bust out laughing. She is like, what? I'm like, it's James and I. Like, we all Did she? I, I must have missed that, that um, the way she does that. <laughs> I'm like, James and I make sure we accentuate Andrea. Got to roll our R's. <laughs> we got to roll our R's when we're we say rolling. Rojas. We're rolling everything. <laughs> <laughs> we're making other le- we're making letters roll that should never have rolled. Right. <laughs> um but yeah, I just I thoroughly enjoyed this as kind of a fill in the blanks compared to like you were saying, um 
the episode where we got like the whole Andre and Lena backstory, that one did kind of feel a little uh, filler, but it did help explain um, Lena's character. And it's so weird because I feel like and and why she was so hurt and damaged from Supergirl's betrayal. So you I, know, it built to something. I've watched every one of the series and shows since Crisis, but for the most part, there's a lot of like these subplots and these stories and stuff since post Crisis that I just don't remember or care about. Um, and it's it's just kind of weird. You know, because, like, watching The Flash and everything, like, Janine, I'm, like, I'm trying to remember, like, okay, what happened? Who happened? When happened? Like, and it's just weird to me because I'm, like, usually I'm so plugged in. But I think part of it's because certain elements have changed and you're trying to discern, like, what still counts, what's still going on. And with these long breaks that we've had. I feel more disconnected from the shows. Like I'm really looking forward to uh, when all of these hit str- uh, Netflix in the next couple yeah. of weeks. When uh, you know it's a week and a day after their season ends. Yeah. So I can so I can watch them straight because like there's stuff that I feel like I'm missing um, because of it. I feel the same way. Um... The only show that I've actually seen every episode um, this season is Supergirl. Um, It's the only one I've seen every single episode um, since the beginning of the season. Um, I didn't catch every single episode of Arrow. Um, I know that I've caught up on the flash a couple of times. Um, like I, I, it had been a few weeks before I'd seen anything. And then I, and then I went back and I watched some, um, so that happened a couple of times. Uh, and right now, uh, I, I'm, I'm a few episodes back again. Um, I mean, one of the last ones I saw was, uh, um, I think where where the the mirror people are talking to uh chick in the mirror where they're actually communicating with her mm. um showing that she's she's a villain um that's one of the last times so I don't know what's happened if if uh friggin Iris is still trapped in the mirror world um Spoilers, I, I don't know Spoilers. uh People out there who are like, what? Iris? What? Yeah, there's just so much that I feel that's happened that I'm just kind of like, I don't even know anymore. Um, Right. Um, I mean, that, granted, that is the the beauty of the binge model. Um, But, uh, I mean, it's the binge model and you have to wait until the season's over with. I, I actually just had something to say about that because I went back and watched the um, uh, Batman's Back episode of Harley Quinn with the uh, with the internet guys at the beginning, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, at the end he's like, "What? It doesn't come out until next week." I said, "Man, this bit, this uh, this release schedule sucks." He's like, dude, it's like it's like normal television. It's Wait till, you know, it's every Friday. And like, it's regular appointment television. Like, you people with your binge model, like, well, it, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not my favorite. It's not my favorite. I mean, yes, it's great to watch a sh- all of a show. But any of those shows that I've binged the crap out of, I've never gone back to watch. Yeah, because they don't work you in know? individual episodes. When you go back, there's not like, oh, you have to watch this for one. Unless it's something like, for example... I watched, uh, I binge pretty much by myself, The House on Haunted Hill on Netflix. Okay? If I ever went back and watched it, I'd have to watch the whole thing again. There's one episode that stuck out that I rewatched only f- for a technical reason. It's because the whole episode feels like it's being done in one take. One continual mm. movement. And I, and I was showing Jania how they were doing oh, wow. it. And I was talking about it with her, you know? Um... What else did we watch? Janine and I watched recently. We finished watching the first season of Lock and Key. <clears throat> and we were just discussing 
you know, these shows aren't made so that the episode in itself stands as an episode. Um, there's no really a, def- a definitive beginning, middle, end. It just it ends at a point, and sometimes you don't know when it's going to end, and then you're waiting for the next one to start because it's just like one thing chopped up. It doesn't stand on its own, and that's that's the problem with the binge model is you want to keep watching because you don't ever feel satisfied that you got a show or a story. You know, unlike these shows like we're talking about here, where, yeah, they're 20 some episode seasons, but for the most part, um, there's an overarching, like, Jania and I have been trying to catch up on Supernatural. We were behind and we're almost done with season 14 to catch up to the current airing season, which is 15. And. The thing is with that show is even the filler episodes are great because that show is geared towards being able to have filler episodes because the whole plot of them going from town to town hunting a case uh, right, is filler. Like it doesn't have to connect to the overarching theme every episode, you know, and it's just it's been refreshing to go back and watch uh, that much Supernatural. But this isn't our Supernatural podcast yet. Yeah. So, James, <laughs> do you have a summary of retaining his pre-crisis memories? Lex takes note of the changes that were made while he continues his hunt for Leviathan. As part of his plans, he convinces his Leviathan double agent Eve to manipulate Amy Sapphire and Richard Bates, as well as kill Jeremiah. After seeing Lena show sympathy to Kara. Lex tricks the former into believing Supergirl is using Myriad. As Lena leaves the Fortress of Solitude, a moray follows her and releases a Sun Eater. Malefic's computers detect it, prompting, prompting McGann to return and confront it. With help, with help from Jean and McGann, Supergirl shrinks the Sun Eater. Unbeknownst to them, Lex locates the VR victim's bodies as Kara and McGann meet with Day, they learn Lex rescued everyone and eliminated Margot. Gemini confronts Lex, but he persuades her to focus Leviathan's wrath on Supergirl. Following a discussion with his mother, Lex uses Lena's transportation watch to enter the Fortress of Solitude. Can we just retitle this episode called Lex? Is a backstabbing mofo. <laughs> Pretty much. I uh, mean, I mean, this is just proof. Like I was saying, like this just shows how dark Lex is, where he cares about, and what he cares about. Because, first of all, we'll back up here. It starts now. Wait, let's we'll another. This is Melissa Benoist's um, directorial debut. And so that's oh, one. Oh, really? Yes. And she did an amazing job. I actually also, just talking about actors, so I don't know if you ever watched The Vampire Diaries. Um, Janine and I watched like the first two or three seasons, and then it just it got stupid. Um, but Paul Wesley, who was on that show, who was also Lucas Luther, mm-hmm. uh, just recently directed an episode of Batwoman. And it was probably one of the best directed episodes of that series. Um, And I was very impressed. So I say that just to say, like, I was very impressed with what she brought to the table from a directing point of view. Um, And I just thoroughly enjoy that. Now, that's one thing to take note is... I think this is a great episode for her to direct because Supergirl is absent a majority of the film, of the episode. Yeah, the the majority of Supergirl that you see in this episode is uh, stuff from the past because it goes from day one of post-crisis and as it continues, it Un, it evolved, um, it unravels Lex's plan um, 
all the way through 90 days post crisis. And so I, I like that the stuff they show, is stuff we've seen already. It gives a little bit of a the majority of it. Which is yeah, nice, which is nice. Um, so Lex wakes up in his room, and it's post crisis. And without the delay, it probably would have been pretty close to being spot on. Yeah, because this this would have happened back in eight. This this episode would have happened back in April, three months after post crisis. After the end, after the final episode of Crisis on Infinite Earths. And, you know, Lex wakes up to his butler. And, you know, he's walking around and sees all like the magazine covers and everything that he's on, how he's being praised and being honored and how uh, we find out that Lena is there asleep on his couch. Uh, which was like really cool just to kind of see things that we didn't see, but we knew were there, you know? Yeah. I mean, the only things that they show, the things that they show from the past were only glimpses. They didn't, they didn't spend time um, on, on things that have, that happened previously. Um, They show what had happened they they show you who and what and what Lex and what uh and and how Lex's hand was involved, but the entire episode is is unraveling Lex's plan throughout the entire three months. So, um, we see you know that, they we see that Lex. Of course, the, we got the part again where he's like, "What's Leviathan?" And we learned that, you know, Lex wasn't the one behind Leviathan. And he gets obsessed with finding them out. He goes to the ship. It's nice to actually expand on that because when he goes, what's Leviathan back post-crisis, he j- that's basically like how it ended. I wasn't at that episode, how it ended, like mm-hmm. what's Leviathan? And that was it. Well, in this they expand on that. Lena starts talking to him, starts telling him what it is, telling him that Eve was playing him and all that kind of stuff. And it's just, so that was pretty cool. So speaking of Eve, Lex, you know, he gets all the associates of people who are working with the Leviathan. He goes in, he targets Eve basically because he shows up and semi rescues her from having to do Leviathan's dirty work and kill them. And we learned that uh, somebody murdered Eve's father and that worked for Leviathan. They're holding that over her. And, you know, Lex basically comes in to rescue her. And we see these different glimpses of every time something happens where Eve thinks that she's kind of figuring out what Lex is doing. So she's like, oh, do you want me to do this to tell them? And he's like, no, no, don't. Because this is what's going to happen. They're going to have this issue. This is going to happen and fall apart, and then I'll come in and do this. And Lex does the what Lex does, you know. He says, "No, no, no." And she's like, "Mr. Luther, like, no, no. Call me, talk, call me Lex." You know. And then he talks about how look at these guards protecting your mother, so that Leviathan won't bother them. And I mean, he just he gets her on his side. Hook, line, and sinker. Yeah, like, he, he in this episode, like, he knows how everyone's going to react. Um, he knows when and where, and he's waiting for, and he's waiting for people to do what he expects to take his next step. Like, he, in this episode, he is extremely intelligent, conniving, manipulating and just evil when, when he finally reveals in the end, like, I don't love you. I used you. You killed Supergirl's dad. Oh, um, hold on. I've got, <laughs> I mean, 
Yeah, so he tells Eve <laughs> yeah, that he looked kinda located getting the, Yeah, kind of getting ahead of myself there. No, you're fine. He tells Eve that I've located the man that murdered your father, and it's a picture of Jeremiah Danvers. And he tells her, he, she's like, I didn't think I had to kill for Leviathan. He's like, you don't have to, but I'm letting you know this is for you. So Eve is the one that killed Jeremiah. Yeah. Which I'm glad they I'm glad they tied it in to the plot instead of basically just writing him off. Yes. Um they they tied it into a masterful plot for the for the season. I thought that was great. Um because then they go back and at the end, like when you when she like Lex shows up at home and she's cooking and he's like, Is that beef Wellington? She's like Yes, for us to be as a couple. He's like, a couple. She's like, I've been trying to tell you, silly. I love you. He's like, of course you do. And then he that's when he starts breaking down everything that he has done. And then, you know, that's when he pulls out and we find out that um, the guards that are guarding her mom are actually there as Lex's uh, henchman that He'll have her mom murdered if Eve does, tries to say anything. He has video footage of her murdering Jeremiah. That he's like, I never took the time to figure out who killed your dad. No, you just murdered Supergirl's dad. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I didn't even look into it. I didn't even bother looking into it. And he just like breaks it down, and she is like, "You're, a, you're, uh, well, she's you're worse than Leviathan." And he's like, "No, better." Like. And, I mean, it just is so dastardly, like, everything that he's doing. And, I mean, it's great for the character because he plays everyone. You know, he knew about the backdoor problem in uh, Obsidian, Obsidian Tech. He knew about the guy who wanted to imprison the other guy because of his wife. Um, he helped him. He was a bartender that helped push him over the edge. Um, yeah, that was crazy. You know, his long hair and stuff. <laughs> it was like cowboy almost shirt, whatever he was wearing. So he made sure that he was involved and nobody was paying attention to him. And that's what Lex Luthor does. That's why he's so dangerous. I love how they gave him a disguise in this. Like, yeah, he, yeah, he's got all these people on his payroll to do whatever he wants, whether because of money or because of blackmail or, or whatever it is, but he gets his hands dirty Mm -hmm. and, and, and he does it in like such an intelligent and, manipulative way you know i mean dressing up and playing a bartender how many times in like the comics have we seen lex Luthor disguised as somebody else you know mm-hmm. i mean heck in in the um in the death of superman when he's under house arrest he he leaves his building disguised as somebody <laughs> you know Leaves leave somebody with his with his collar with his his um, ankle monitor on at at his building at his home. Like, I mean, I mean, this is one of the this is one of the the best written and and best acted versions of Lex Luthor that's been on screen. I mean, there's really nothing better you can say about it than that. Because you're you're absolutely right. And that's why I loved it. Like, you know, even when he confronts Jam Jamine, Gamine, uh Yeah, Gamine. She like and I was like and I kinda thought for a second, I was like, when did her like real name get like revealed? Like because uh, Eve Eve even says it earlier in the episode, she's like, Gamine won't even let me on the ship. And I was like, oh, okay. I was like, I was trying to remember, like, when did her name get revealed? But, um, 
I say it was either through evenness or something we don't recall because of the gap. <laughs> I think it's the latter. But you know, she uh, she comes and Lex is like talking to her and confronting her and trying to get this massive <clears throat> giant VR. Everyone jumps in VR at the same time to escape something. And she turns into like a metal monster that reminded me of the the cyborg from Superman three. <laughs> I was just gonna say that. She look she looks like the, the robot, the cyborg from Superman three. And <laughs> that's my exact same thought. <laughs> and so when Lex releases the Sun Eater, it causes everyone to freak out and panic, so they all like escape into VR. We see people all around the world kind of like just going into VR to escape their reality. And yeah, as Jason Muse, he jumped off of a, which is funny to see Jason Muse as um, a farmer in this episode. As a farmer, he jumps off, says some kind of weird line. I forget what he said, um, but then he, he looks at his phone or something, and it says like. Um, emergency reality escape or something. I, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure the exact wording of it offhand, but I was like, Oh, that's crazy. Like in case of an emergency, you know, escape to VR. I mean, what's going to happen if you die, if your body gets killed, right. Right. You know? Like yeah. <laughs> you you go, you escape into VR. You can't physically die do anything so in case of an emergency you're just stuck you're screwed in case of emergency, you're um right and that's what i thought was interesting is you know so lex has that um and then so all that's going on to prove his point McGann shows back up because of, like you said about the myriad and the q waves so it was nice to see McGann again I think, yeah, I thought the same. Um, and then Supergirl shows up to help McGann and Jean stop the Sun Eater wearing a Lexo suit, which is ironic. Um, well, the interesting thing, um, we see McGann again. So Jean is wearing that that Martian vest or whatever mm-hmm. as as David Harewood mm-hmm. um, in the early <clears throat> in the earlier portion of this episode. <laughs> And then later on, after the Sun Eater comes out and McGann shows up, they're both wearing the new style costume. Oh. And we actually get to even see David Harewood as himself, I believe, in the new style costume. Nice. That's very nice. I must have missed that. Um, but yeah, I... Uh, I really liked seeing the different um, points of view on Lex. And then, of course, the episode basically ends, um, you know, where it started with Lex being the hero and saving all those people. We find out that Lex is the one who let William get the clues to piece it all together. Um, And Lex, you know, had Supergirl use the myriad for the q waves to find the missing people just to piss off lena and he calls his mom and says i did it my way and there's that nice little refrain of the music of my way which is you know how he did it in season four where Mm -hmm. he uh you know flew around listening to it in his lexo suit but i mean all in all like it was just it was a great episode to see Lex grow because, but I have to ask one question. Where's Superman? And I, I don't mean to say that in a way of putting down the show or anything, but Lex Luthor being as big of a threat as he is, being a big Superman villain, with Superman having his post crisis memories. I don't think he would be too happy with Lex being in the spotlight as a good person. Right. Um, I didn't even, I didn't even notice uh, watching it last time. The, the more a um, following 
Lena through the through the portal into oh, the fortress. Yeah, I, and, I can't remember uh, what it was called, but yeah, and that's what re- you know. Attack Supergirl releases the Sun Eater. Yeah, and uh, Lex uses how I forget what they're doing. Why she's using Myriad to block it, um, but. Uh, whatever he's doing forces them to use myriad. And of course, you know, Lena is not happy with that. And, uh, he convinces her to go to the fortress and, and he uses the tech to figure out where the fortress is. Like he uses Lena to track Lena. Yeah. Lex, uh, to the fortress. Lex does nothing. So, ahead of everyone but i am i was impressed by just like you know because I, like i feel like this is lex's big you know episode because you know crier they can't keep him around forever and we don't even know if he's going to be on uh the superman and lois series um we don't know but any closing thoughts on de las machina um, I mean, as just as, as jumpy as some things have been and, um, long breaks and crisis, um, I mean, this is a top notch episode. Uh, John Cryer is fantastic. Um, they did a they did a good job with some special effects in this episode. They fly into space. There's a sun eater. Um, got a couple of Martians. Like, and the plan. It's it is a top notch episode um, for sure. Uh, typically, I mean, anything with John Cryer in it now is <laughs> it, it elevates the episodes. So that's good. Look up in the sky. Look up in the sky. Look in the sky.